The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Open stars and strikes. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Hey, Candlebin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Summerville Lumber. Looks good. Looks good. That's the goal. It's a goal. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Burton. Hi everybody and welcome to the semi-final week here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We're at Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, of course, Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And we're down to uh, our top three bowlers. Uh, again, looking for someone who can win two in a row. Perhaps Mike Morgan can do it. I don't know. It's, it's pretty tough, and as the bowlers get easier, we, today we got uh, right. Paul Berger coming in. So <laughs> if anyone's going to make it two in a row, uh, why not start here? <laughs> all right, let's meet our two bowlers. First of all, returning for his second week, looking for a win number two in a row from Lynn, Massachusetts, our number three seed, Mike Morgan. Okay, Mike comes in averaging 126, high single of 188, his roll-off score 703. And Mike, last week uh, sneaked out a two-pin win over Joe Ashline, 381 to 379 in the final box. So this week he'll be looking for his second win in a row, and he will face our number two seed from Hopedale, Mass, Paul Berger. Okay, Paul comes in averaging 127, 193 for high triple, a uh, high single, high triple 500, and his roll-off score 703. Also, and of course we have uh, prize money on the line. Uh, one of these guys will move into the finals next week to go for a thousand dollars first place money, and of course the qualification into the Tri-State Mega Bucks Tournament of Champions. We've got our bonus ball contest a little bit later on in the show as well. All of that beginning with the first of our three strings between Mike Morgan and Paul Berger. After these messages, don't go away. Well, these are the three guys, or the two guys, I should say, that tied in our five-string roll-off, which, by the way, was held at uh, the Exeter Lanes in Exeter. And as you can see, Paul Berger and Mike Morgan, dead even at 7.03. The seedings were determined by the high single thrown in those five games. Paul Berger uh, taking the advantage there with the 172 over Mike Morgan's 152. And, of course, the winner of this match today will survive to move in next week against our top seed, Fred Ranella, for the series championship. So Mike Morgan, by virtue of the fact that he is the number three seed, will lead things off. If you missed last week, what an exciting match against Joe Ashline. Mike was ahead by 40 after one. Actually was behind after two. No, up by six, I believe, after two. Lost the lead at one time. Finally threw a strike in the final box to capture the victory. Mike had a very unusual turn of luck. He had six consecutive marks to end the first game. And then he only had a total of four marks over the last two games. And one of them was that big strike in the final box to win it. His brother was funny after the match. He has the best defense in the league <laughs> in the game of candle pin bowl. <laughs> Protect well, that 40-pin lead. Mike went 106-107 the last two games and won the match. <laughs> there are many times you can do that. Speaking of Exeter Lanes, want to thank uh, Rob Ficara and the gang over in Exeter for their help in coordinating the final roll-off for this series here on Stars and Strikes. And uh, while Cindy Sisson took care of that piece of dead wood, it gives us a chance to uh, remind everyone we want to wish all of you a very happy and healthy and safe Thanksgiving weekend upcoming. And a spare for Mike Morgan after the wait. 147 was to the left of the head pin. Watch the ball carry him off that into the piece of wood. Takes out the 4-7, first mark of the match. Now, another fellow is no stranger to our show. 
Yeah, this guy's pretty good, too. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Berger. Good 10 by Paul. Paul's been in a couple of our tournament of champions and uh, actually was a tournament champion winner. So he's done it all on Stars and Strikes and he wants to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> One, four, seven. Same leave that Mike Morgan had in his second frame. Actually, the last time Paul was here was for the finals of the Tournament of Champions back in the spring. He was the number one seed and guess who he had to face in the finals? <laughs> Mike Morgan, who beat him 384 to 347 as Mike won four consecutive matches to take last year's title. Both bowlers start off with a 10 box and a spare in the second. With a seven and the 10. Well, let's see where the wood settles down. He could have a shot. See him directing traffic, <laughs> look at this. Whoa, he's saying. <laughs> He's going to try to hit it right in the V. Both pieces of wood meet. Hopefully one will take the 7, one will take the 10. Oh. It was a little high on one, yes. but he's still going to get it. I think the ball was the final uh, determining factor there. The ball kind of sneaked back into the corner. Let's watch. He didn't get full effect of that piece of wood that on the left. The wood. the wood tapped it. The ball stayed in the channel. It almost looked like a joint effort there. <laughs> <laughs> Two in a row, anyways, for Mike Morgan. A little head high pin. in the head pin. Seven pin drop. And try to snap this wood. Try to hit it high. Come in contact with a th uh, two pin and hopefully spin away and get the ten. Yes, well, coming back another way to do it. <laughs> now there's two ways to do that one. Watch the wood spin away. Does get the ten pin, but the second that actually probably was the ten pin that came back across for the four. Paul Berger on a spare, and he does go it for the strike. <laughs> wow. Just nudged that seven pin, moved it back, and started to rock and roll, and finally fell. What's the nudge? Right there. Finally went down. Looking for the double. Triangle, four, seven, eight. Ooh. No. A little heavy on the four pin. So Paul cannot match the three marks in a row that Mike Morgan put up there. So Mike should take the lead with this ball. Anything more than four will give him a lead. Talking to Mike after last week's match and just couldn't understand what happened the second and third games. He said just... Wasn't really carrying the extra pin like he was the first game. That's a seven pin drop and the spare in the fourth. The one, seven, and nine pins left. Piece of wood in behind the head pin. Could give him some help. This may make our highlight reel if this goes. Nope. Well, Mike, uh, for only the fifth time, in 16 appearances on singles here on Stars and Strikes, did not get a 400 triple last week. 11 times in 16 appearances, he's had 400 or better. It's amazing. Slikes the lanes here at Park Place Lanes, and Wyndham seems to hit him pretty well. He's a league bowler here this, uh, this year, I understand. I liked him so much, he came up and joined the league. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Oh, pretty nice looking hit, maybe a little light, and did not carry the four and the seven. And a nine, 81 through six. Paul Berger from Hopedale, Mass. With that nine box, that's the first pin either bowler has left standing. Oh, none standing there. 
Ball's yet to leave one standing. <laughs> that was a quick strike. Cross over in the one-two pocket. Nice and tight, though, and they all go down. Looking for the double over in lane 31. And looking to take the lead, which he will. Now, the piece of wood to the right will cover the pins. Ooh, he's high. Ooh. Got it. 89 and a spare up in the sixth. He came to play. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Morgan coming up a little short, just short of the head pin, and that's what causes that leave. The three, five, and eight go out right in a row. Just missing the head pin to the right. Oh, now he's got some work. He'll probably go for the head pin, see if he can get as many as he can, and start the work again on lane 31. Oh, that's what a great, great out. out. Oh, that's oh. a terrific shot. Well, here you hope to get three, four, or five of them, but to get all of them, that's a bit much to ask, but that was a great shot. This time to the left. Hitting the head pin with that first ball is the name of the game. There he's shooting his third, and it's still standing, and it still stands. Eight box for Mike Morgan, 99 through eight. Paul Berger working on a spare in the sixth, already at 89. Oh, another big first ball. This time he leaves a solid six pin. Now, the last three times on lane 32, he's had two strikes and a solid nine pin drop. Oh. No, Paul went down to his knees to try and hang on, but it just slipped by to the left. Paul and his wife uh, Paula have two sons, Damon and Alex. Paul works for Sun Microsystems as a new products manager. Does a lot of his bowling at Metro West in Framingham and Fico's in Franklin, Mass. And now he's shooting at the 1 2 10. Trying to take advantage of those two open frames by his opponent. Can't do it. Well, he can gain a couple in count. He's opposite an eight frame, leading by 17, 18 now. And this will make it 19. There's the picture. The winner to move into the finals next week against Fred Ranella. The runner-up today takes home third place prize money, $250. Mike is back on the head pin. Well, that time he got the head pin. He missed the previous two boxes, not that time. A little skip there. Much like he did in the strike in the last frame last week. It's just enough to take a little bit off the ball. Instead of going flush in the head pin, crosses over in the one two. And he likes the result. First strike of the day for Michael. Looking for another one, a little lighter this time. Leaves the 3-6. 3-6 three, six. Three, six and careful we'll drive this wood straight back. And Didn't no. Hit. The three pin wasn't covered enough with that wood to, to have him use it for the six pin. The result is a nine on the strike. And a 10 box gives him one decent 128 be trailing. How many? Well, let's see what Paul does in his ninth and tenth frames. Just put his hands up. He's. What are you going to do? I want any lower in the wood. It might have snapped around, left both pins standing. Paul Berger off target to the left. No, oh, but he converts it with a spare. Just barely touches the head pin on the 1-3 pocket. Watch the head pin go to the sidewall, come back, and take out the 8 pin. Great shot by Paul. 128 to ninth. Bonus ball coming. He was fortunate there to get six. 
punching through the middle. And a makeable spare. Now with that wood coming up behind the th two pin, he can drive the three straight back. The wood should kick forward. It did, but he missed the three pin. Well, Paul can knock down these two. He will not have left one pin standing the first frame. First game, and I jinxed him, <laughs> and there's the nine box. <laughs> 143 and a 15-pin advantage for Paul Berger. One game in the books. Two to go, semifinal week on Stars and Strikes. Don't go away. Paul Berger now. 15 pins to the good after one game. Oh, great, great shot. I thought he had that covered. The one, three, six, four, seven played in the inside. Ball took the four, seven, as well as the head pin. Just the six, and he clears that one away. Let's the ball deflect off the head pin. Everything around the six. Oh, comes back with a strike. That's Paul's third strike already. Mike Morgan has one. He got it right at the trail end of the first game. That time he's a little too heavy on the head pin and he'll shoot 6 7 10 with wood. Get that wood flying around though, this could be interesting. Let's see. No, leaving the 10 pin. I have to think he hit it where he wanted to. Just need a little more help for the 10 pin. Takes it. Last week, Mike opened up with a 168. Another difficult one, six, seven. And the four pin. A couple ways. Either wood on either side is going to try to snap it. No, didn't get far enough to the left. And this is what he ran into last week, the second and third games. He started splitting the pins and not getting them together after that first ball and really struggled the rest of the match. But he opened with that big 168. Paul Berger now increases lead, working on a strike. started and then the wood started rolling again toward the 610 and now it settled in just behind the six moving away again Paul has to wait that's most bowlers they hate this weight <laughs> you know, you're all set to go you just threw a decent ball you just want to keep going Looked like he was a little heavy on the six pin, but it was enough to carry the six and the ten for the spare on strike. And he's off and running again, second game. This time a little light. Hang on. <laughs> Eight pin dropped, three nine left. And help on both sides. Right there. I think he might have got those two pins without the help of the wood. Three in a row again for Paul Berger. Oh, I shouldn't say again. He had a couple in a row, twice in the first game. This time three in a row in the second. Oh. Oh. Big first ball strike, Mike Morgan. I was going to say, how can that seven pin possibly stand up after throwing a ball like that? There goes nine of them in a hurry. It's the head pin that came off and tapped the seven. 
looking for two in a row over on lane 31. Love to go to a break with a double strike working. It's pretty good. Oh, yes. Double strike for Mike Morgan, and we will take a timeout. There you go. When we come back, Paul Berger works on a spare, and Mike Morgan will work on a double strike. Don't go away. Paul Berger has a spare in the fourth. Three marks in a row. I think he uh, left a wake-up call for Mike. <laughs> he came back with a double strike. And let's see, an eight-pin drop. Five and nine. Nice piece of wood next to it. Whoa. Nothing to it. <laughs> a little bit high, but it was four in a row. The lead jumps to 32, temporarily anyways. Everything's going to change on that double strike. Oh, watch this now. Five of the eight pins that dropped are still on the deck. <laughs> it's the 710. It's going to go to the right. And need some help with the yes. seven and gets the ball to come back. Five in a row. And we're off to the races. He's trying to use the wood, but get some help with the ball come back. And now it's a big ball for Mike. Morgan working on a double strike and would like nothing more than a throw one more. Taking a little extra time. On the double strike, a little light, but watch out if it comes this way, it won't. It'll be an eight drop. Three five, got to be thinking three pin. Object pin. Ah, you heard him. As soon as he threw it. Nine box. Right, on, he throws a 75 half and loses nine more pins. So he now trails by 24. Both of these guys on pace right now to throw 400 triples. <laughs> Diamond leave, two, four, five, and of course the sleeper in the back, the eight pin, usually is the problem. Nope. In this case, it's the five and the eight. A reminder, one of our sponsors for this series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, the folks at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire. Come to Salem and save. Visit the folks at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem. Tell them you heard about them right here on Stars and Strikes. We'd appreciate it. Oh, Paul Berger. Oh, my. How about that? I didn't even see what happened. Oh. I was going to put down three on the, on the scoreboard. Oh, we may have to take another look at that when this box is over. That looked for all the world like a three-pin punch out, and all of a sudden it's seven. And a spare leave. Oh, he missed the wood out front. He's not too happy with that one. This is going to go if he hits the wood in front of the three pin. No problem. I think he was kind of astonished at the at the break himself. Let's see. I was going to put down three because it was a one eight nine. Something clipped the ten pin and everything came back and my oh my. Watch out, half Worcester. Well, he's paying for that break now. <laughs> Inside oh, boy. for the spare. <laughs> boy, it could very easily be seven marks in a row now. Mike Morgan back up now. Here's brother Tom Morgan in the back. Rooting his brother on. Oh, oh yes. yes. It works. <laughs> well, he's had three marks this game. They've all been strikes. And he still hasn't gained any ground. No. <laughs> the last four marks Mike has thrown have been strikes. Coming forward for a nine drop. Almost got another double. Not quite the conventional way, but... Head pin was next to the last pin to go down. Seven pin. There's no doubt in my mind where I would go. 
Wood. Wood. <laughs> he's got a clear shot at the seven, but he's... Oh. He went after it. <laughs> have to admire his courage there. That is Mike's first spare in 14 boxes. That's twofold there. It's his first mark uh, spare in a long time, but it got the single pin clean, and there's a strike on spare, and Paul is uh, not easing on the accelerator at all. He is working on one heck of a game. Both guys are right now. It's already at 141 plus the bonus ball. Misses the head pin, but let's see. One in the, s in the 10 pin left. And a nice piece of wood next to the 10 pin. The only thing he wants to avoid is hitting the head pin flush. Either side, he'll have a shot at making it. And that's what he did. Flush on the head pin, drove it straight back. He's at 150, 159. And this will be 160. And, there and this time he did not leave a pin standing. So he's left one pin standing in 20 boxes. And he's got 303 after two. Now Mike Morgan working on a pretty good game of his own, but he's going to have to keep going. <laughs> he's going to find himself down a whole bunch working on a spare in the eighth. He'd have to throw two more big marks here to even to equal Paul's game. Well, he's got the 110 left, similar to Paul's shot. Maybe, yes. <laughs> He's got a chance of throwing uh, you know, high 140s, 150, and losing more ground. If he gets a big fill in another mark, though, he could get up to where Paul Berger was in this game. Oh, my. Half Worcester left. Mike takes the two in the corner for a 143 and a two game total, 271. 272, rather, 144. Make it. And so the lead for Paul Berger is 31 after two games, and we will be back with more in a minute. Mike Morgan leads off the third game, and there's his situation. He's got 272 for two, and he trails by 31. <laughs> Pretty good mix there on a light hit. He'll shoot at the three pin with a little guide to the right. For the spare, mark number nine for Mike Morgan. On the head pin again, and this time the five stays up somehow. The one two puck at that time sprayed everything away and around and over and <laughs> looked like through the five pin. But the five pin remained, but it's two marks in a row. And with a giant fill on the first one, a nine. Well, it's a good way to start, down by 31. Paul Berger. 2-4-7 on the left, 3-6 on the right. Piece of wood behind the 6-pin. Quickly, 10 pins are taken off that lead, down to 21. Both of these guys are among the record holders here on Stars and Strikes for the most strikes in a match. Paul Berger shares the record, nine strikes in one match with Peter Flynn. 
Mike Morgan, a few years ago, once threw eight strikes in a match. No for Paul. Well, let's wait. Let's see. If that wood rolls back onto the plate, no, nope, it turned to the left. Took a turn because it had enough speed. So Mike Morgan is going to have a chance to cut it even further into the lead. Lead now at 21 minus this ball. Mike took an extra moment to settle himself, and look at that, the 189. It's a three fill, spread eagle plus the five pin in the middle. Going the three six side. Good effort. Leaves the two four five. See if he decides to play the wood. No, he went right at it for the 10 box. See the lead 18 in the match for Paul Berger. Mike wants to keep a little pressure on. He wants to put another mark up here in the fourth. Oh, that pin came sliding off the kick to the left and went right in between the diamond and was almost standing up when it went through there. Everything but the four pin. So two marks to open, and now two open frames for Mike Morgan, 52 through four. Paul Berger has gone two marks, uh, excuse me, two boxes in a row without marking only once, rather twice in this match. Ooh, light hit. Now three times. Didn't catch enough of the two pin to carry the four. Now he's gone three boxes without marking in the same game. That's the first time that's happened in this match for Paul. He has 12 marks overall. Mike Morgan has 10. Watch out. Was left with a 4-7. Piece of wood came flying off the right side wall, knocked the 4 out. Now he's looking at the 7. And, and he's got it. Spare. That could be a big mark right there. Paul Berger's lead is 18 plus the fill on that mark. But it'll be Mike Morgan to step up to the line when we return on Stars and Strikes in a minute. So Mike Morgan steps up for box number five, game three. Wants to get the offense going again. Start off with a spare nine, spare three, then open third and the fourth. Gets the break on the five and almost carries the seven as well. And he's got it for the spare. And through the middle again on the fill, this time for five. Three, six on the right, two, four, and seven on the left. Oh, oh that oh, close that nice to picking that up. On, ten. ten box. We'll check it out. Catches the six pin, just missing the three twice. Paul Berger working on a spare. Hello, there goes the 10. <laughs> For a minute, I thought he was going to left with a 7 10. Clears the 10 out, nine fill. Looking at the seven pin. He's got it. Matching the spare that Mike put up in the fifth. There's two marks in a row now for Paul. 
303 is what he was after the second game, 143 and 160. Six ten left, eight fill on that spare. Chance to make it three in a row. Oh yeah. And he's gonna build his lead right back up there with a big fill. Back up to 30 pins now. Dare say that Mike's gonna have to just about mark out to have a chance in this one now. Mike looks at the three, four, six. And a nine box. So uh, getting to be strike time now. At, at least marks, yeah. He's down by 30. He's got to hope that Paul uh, does not fill the spare. And so see that head pin go down. The one and the seven left. Bear in the eighth. Mark number 12. Reminder that one of our participating sponsors in this series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Somerville Lumber. Many locations, of course, where you can get it right the first time. Visit Somerville Lumber today. 378 left for Paul. Piece yes. of wood. Very nicely done. Four marks in a row now, and He's on cruise. Well, clearly the difference this week from last week is that Mike Morgan didn't have the good defense working. <laughs> <laughs> right back in the pocket. This time a seven drop. Two, four, five. Triangle left. Paul's already over 400. He's got three boxes to go. Oh, I'm another 10 box. He's now gone through 28 boxes. He's left two pins standing. It's amazing. Nine box the end of the first game and a nine box to begin the third game. It's the only two pins he's left standing. This on a spare. And look at that. The seven, the nine, and the 10. After a wait for the wood, Mike oh, converts it for shot. the spare. Great shot. And that mark should ensure Mike Morgan of a 400 triple as well. He needed a 128. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say it. Mike can blame me for that one. But <laughs> That's right. I say no. But it's not going to make a difference in the match. No. <laughs> I wouldn't have said it if that had been the case. <laughs> It'll be a 123 <laughs> and a 395 <laughs> for Mike. So Paul Berger has already got this win in the bank. He's already at 413 with two to go. And I'll go out and let him say he'll be at least 420. <laughs> <laughs> what a risk taker. <laughs> Four, eight, nine, ten. Sounds simple enough, doesn't it? Well, Paul Berger will be coming back next week in the finals to face Fred Ranella, who has not been here for almost six years. Wow. I don't mean wow about the, <laughs> the six, six years. years. It's <laughs> that how do you end up with a seven box with a piece of wood straight across the lane? And Paul is at 420 right now. He's got a chance for a spare in the 10th. 
give him 430. 127 plus the bonus ball. And that is his 17th mark of this match. I have to ask him what happened in the ninth frame there with that seven bucks. <laughs> the worst framing he's had in the entire match. That's amazing. A 7, a 134, and an outstanding 437 for Paul Berger. He wins and advances to the finals next week. We'll set that up for you and also have our bonus ball contest in a minute. And welcome back to Park Place Lanes, Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Our first half of our semifinal competition is over. And uh, again, Mike Morgan uh, not able to make it two in a row. Uh, Paul Berger throws a big number at him. And uh, boy, throwing 395 is nothing to sneeze at, but it just wasn't enough today. Uh, just like two thoroughbreds. You know, it's a joy to watch both of these guys. Great gentlemen of the game and uh, great Candlepin bowlers. And it's uh, just a joy to watch them. All right, let's meet both of them and uh, award some prize money here. Mike Morgan, come on up. A 395, some hard work, but boy, he threw a, he threw an awfully big number at you. There's a $250 check for third place, but uh, he he really he really made it tough. Well, he didn't leave the door open too much. Then <laughs> I came out that third string and made a little run. And then I throw the 189, you know. But that's just from him throwing all the marks. You have to fill them up big and mm -hmm. you just throw the ball a little carefully. You know, not that it would have mattered. He probably would have threw a double, whatever. He <laughs> you know. But I mean, take nothing away from Paul. He threw the ball great. So he gave you a break. He threw a seven box there right at the end. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, he, he's up 50. He can afford a seven box, you know. But hey, you bowl great. Well, we're going to see you uh, later today, in fact, uh, with Mike Poulin on uh, Stars and Strikes doubles. And, of course, uh, it's very likely we might see you back here again at noontime before the year's over. Good luck. Oh, God willing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Good to see you, as always. All right, Paul Berger now on lane 31. We're going to have uh, Paul roll the bonus ball and see if we can give away uh, some bowling balls here as well as uh, some cash. $30 is the amount. And it is six. The card is here. It is not a ooh, not a match. Uh, Jenny Jankowski of Methuen, Mass. Paul thought you were going to throw a strike, so um, she made it real tough. Uh, but congratulations on the match. Uh, slide right in here so we can get you on camera. And uh, boy, it, everything clicking it seemed uh, pretty much from the start in this one. Yeah, everything was going real well. You know, no one mentioned that, uh, that Mike and I, this is the third time, and he's got me the other two times. <laughs> I wanted to see if it was possible to beat him. That's all. He's, he's, he's a great one-on-one -on -one bowler. Uh, he has had a terrific record here, too, as I'm sure you know. Yeah, he's fantastic. Well, now you get to uh, to move into the finals, and, of course, the Tournament of Champions is, is uh, nothing new for you, but this time uh, you're going to be facing a guy who is trying to get into it for the first time, uh, Fred Rinell. How much do you know about Fred? Uh, I don't know too much about him, but anyone that can throw 724, you've <laughs> got to respect him. <laughs> that was the roll-off score for uh, for Fred Rinella, so we'll be looking forward to that one next week. Get some rest, and we'll see you then. Thanks very much. All right, that's Paul Berger with a 437. And we will now uh, throw you over to the uh, ladder so we can catch you up on what's going to happen next week. We are left with our top two seeds, Paul Berger, of course, the number two seed by virtue of the high single over Mike Morgan. And now beating him today in head-to-head -head competition, 437 to 395. So it'll be Paul Berger against Fred Rinella. And the interesting thing about Fred is he has not been here since January of 1987. So he comes back and, and comes back with a bang with that huge number in the roll-off. Uh, he's another one of those sleeping giants. Uh, all he needs is a few notches in his belt to beat uh, uh, the likes of Paul Berger, and uh, you're going to create a monster there because he's an excellent bowler. Well, don't forget, uh, we'll be back at 5 o'clock this afternoon from the Londonderry Bowling Center for Stars and Strikes Doubles. You'll see Mike Morgan again in that show paired with Mike Pullen. And don't forget, next Sunday, it's Championship Week again here on Stars and Strikes. We'll start with 12 noon. We'll start with Fred Rinella against Paul Berger, and then, of course, we'll have Stars and Strikes Doubles Championship Week next Sunday at 5. So until later this afternoon, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, Doug Brown, so long, everybody. Have a good week.